So I have a 2015 Chevrolet Volt on the lift with the front right tire off. You would probably think I'm working on suspension or brake, but actually we're going to repair an issue with heat running on electric. This car does not have heat when it is running on electric. It does have heat when it's running on the engine. Now we can test some of these components that's required to get heat inside the Volt without any tools. If you look at the dash here, you can see a kilowatt meter. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the heat on. And when we turn that heat on, we're gonna see the kilowatts kind of spike a little bit. And that's gonna tell us that the heating element is good. See, these cars have a heating element and they also have a pump. Now that pump flows coolant through the heating element. The heating element heats it up and that's how the inside of your car gets warm. So if you take a look right here, I'm gonna turn the heat on, you're gonna see it spike just a little bit and sometimes it can spike as high as seven and eight and sometimes it can only spike about three. I do believe the heating element is actually variable. So right now we're watching it spike but then it's going to go right back down to about nothing because the pump isn't working and the heating element is smart enough not to burn itself up. It'll turn itself back down and off when there's no coolant fluid. So in this particular situation we watched it heat up. We're not getting heat inside the car so we know something failed but we did watch it heat up so we know that the element is good now we need to test the pump and see if the pump is actually pumping fluid or not so now that you have determined that the heating element is probably good because you're showing a decent spike in kilowatts you can reach up here under the right fender well because this is where the pump is located that pumps the fluid and you can actually see that pump down inside here in fact that's the bracket that holds the pump on right there now when the pumps on you should be able to hear it it's it's got a little bit of a hum to it but if you're in doubt turn the heat on high reach in here with your fingers and lay it right here on top of this pump bracket and you will feel it vibrate this pump has a little bit of vibration when it's on actually it has a lot of vibration when it's on and that's why the manufacturers put it inside of a rubber dampening device to kind of get some of those vibrations from echoing down the frame so you can reach in there heats on high and if you don't feel that pump on you probably have a faulty pump now if you do have the pump on you can feel it pumping and you did see a kilowatt spike on your dash you can say your pump is good and you can assume also that your heating element is good it's probably the valve that controls all of this that's your faulty part now we've already determined that the coolant pump is bad in this car so we need to replace it and the first thing you're going to want to do is disconnect the 12 volt battery that is located in the trunk whenever you're working on these cars you really need to disconnect that that's underneath this hatch GM's provided this fancy cord that helps hold the hatch up while you're working under here. And you're going to see a couple of trap doors. This is the positive side, and I like to disconnect the negative side. And basically a 10 millimeter socket will reach down in there and undo the fastener, and you can just lay this off to the side. Now the very next thing you need to do after you remove the tire, of course, is to loosen up all these little screws because you need to get this plastic shield out of your way so you can get to that pump. Now there's a series of torque screws that go all around the wheel well and there's a couple of little plastic clips that you have to unfasten to get this out of here. And as if all those little plastic clips and, and screws were not annoying, there's even more up underneath the car that you have to remove. So this plastic shield actually comes all the way out to the front of the car, and there are some fasteners and bolts you have to get undone there. The inside of the wheel well does have these little release clips so you can separate the two halves. And originally I tried to just take this side off, but quite honestly I could not get these to release. So I had to take the entire shield out. And quite honestly there's only a few more screws and, and fasteners on this side, so it really wasn't that big of a deal. And it leaves us wide open to work inside, which is awesome. Now the pump is fully exposed and you can see exactly where it sits. It sits right down here. It doesn't look really complicated to get to. There's only a couple of lines and a plug and a couple of bolts that's even holding the entire unit on. This is the new pump and I ordered it from GM Parts Direct. I'll put a link down below. I will say that they say on their website that this is a special order item and they don't keep it in stock and it did take an excess of 10 days for me to get this part. So keep that in mind if you're going to order it from GM Parts Direct. Because this pump uses the same fluid that is in your radiator, you're going to want to drain your radiator. It's a good time to flush your coolant. I myself have already flushed the coolant, so as you can see, I just plugged my lines when I pulled them off very quickly. And that's only because I just flushed this fluid. But I highly recommend that if you're changing this pump out, you're going to want to flush it anyhow. So now that the lines are off and removed, we're going to unbolt the pump. And we're going to try to get this plug off the backside unplugged. 
Now to get this plastic cover off so you can get to that plug, there is one of those little plastic clips right back here where my screwdriver is. And there is another one right here. Pop those off and you can remove this plastic cover which will expose that plug. Now the plug has a little keeper on it. You need to pop this little keeper off and that will release the plug. After releasing the plug, the whole pump assembly will pull right out and you're ready to put the new one on. And with a little video editing magic, we're all back together. Basically, just put the pump back on the same way you took the pump off. It's really not difficult to change this pump. I'm going to say if you're an experienced mechanic, a half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. And if you're a backyard uh, do-it-yourself type guy, you might spend an hour to two. But no more than that. It's an extremely easy pump to change. The only problem is they do run about 180 bucks at the time of this video. But, you know, it is what it is. And it's a lot cheaper than taking it to the dealership because I think they want to charge you about seven hundred dollars to do this job the only thing to do now is make sure you top off your coolant back to the original level and get in your car turn it on and see if you have heat and you can see on the dash we're pulling four kilowatts right now it was actually up to seven when i first started the car and i do have heat coming out of the vents so our problem is fixed if you like these types of videos please take a look at some of my other videos i normally do a lot of build it yourself type stuff but i occasionally fix stuff <laughs> if it's mine and it's broken Please like and subscribe.